All right, welcome back to the film room here at sonsofmontezuma.com. It's Mateo San Diego, and once again, I'm joined with Coach Carrasco, Coach C. So let me ask you real quick, because you were a grad assistant a little back in the days under the Tom Craft era, and I remember those days, you know, you coming back from a, a long road trip or, or a home game late nights. Let me ask you, man, what, 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 what's one of your lasting memories uh, in your time on the Mesa as part of the coaching staff? What, what's a lasting memory for you? Well, I'll never forget the first day I got on a part of the program and being an alum, loving San Diego State football. It was a dream come true. Uh, working with a guy like Ray Peterson, who was a wide receiver coach, who I went to school with, was just an honor. The coaching staff was awesome. Tom Kraft was awesome. You know, coach, you know, just a good dude, real good dude. The O-line coach, Coach Baldwin, Coach Kalmeyer on the defensive side of the ball, Andy Boo, our linebacker coach. You talk about fire. He just brought it, you know what I mean? And just loved that he was a great teacher, but there was a motivation about him that just, just sitting by him, you just felt you know, like, man, you're ready to go through a wall for that coach right there. And it was just a fun, fun group. No doubt the players, of course, our star player at the time, our linebacker, you know, uh, the ball, all, all our linebackers that year were just, was just uh, something else. But Kirk Morrison was the standout linebacker for us. But the biggest memory I think I have, it's funny, it was a loss. And that was that game against Ohio State. They had just finished winning the national championship, beat Miami the year before. We fly to Columbus in week two, if I recall correctly. And our, our starting quarterback had gotten hurt, you know, and uh, he's now the strength coach there at San Diego State, you know. And uh, and so we uh, go with – Dugalecki was our backup quarterback. And we really – we were kind of feeling like we don't know for sure as a coaching staff how we're going to do. This is the national champs defending national champs in the shoe. Here we are. And I remember Coach Stark, who was our quarterback coach, he kind of was telling the whole coaching staff, you know what? He goes, our boys are going to rise up and perform. They're going to compete. And they did exactly that. We ended up losing that game 16 to 13. But Ohio State never scored an offensive touchdown in that game. They scored a, a touchdown by a 102-yard interception going the other way. It was their only touchdown. And boy, did that gnaw at us as a coaching staff, as a team on that whole four and a half hour flight back home, because we knew we had them. It would have yeah. been the biggest win in that San Diego State football history <laughs> to go in the shoe against Ohio State. You know, we felt like we outplayed them, especially on defense. They really, our defense just did a wonderful job. They were, I think, eighth ranked defense in the nation that year. Offensively, we had a lot of young guys going on. And uh, Hamilton, our running back, Lionel Hamilton, A-Train is what we called him. He was a true freshman that year, and he was our star offensive player. Um, but we had a, a young receiver named Webb, who was one of the older guys. And and so, uh, but our own line, you know, was just something else, you know, as far as, it was just a fun group to coach. But losing that thing 16 to 13, not giving up one offensive touchdown, um, it just, it crawled, it still crawls in me because it, it would have been an awesome thing to be a part of San Diego State. It's probably the biggest win in their history if we would have got it. Um, and it's just something that I'll never forget, you know. So it's weird to have your biggest, one of your biggest memories on that year to be a loss. But we had them, you know, we had them. And, uh, and uh, we just didn't get it done completely. But uh, yeah, I definitely remember that dark side defense, man. They, they were notorious and so many close calls. They kept us in a lot of games during those times. But that stadium was awesome. I mean, 105,000. I'll never forget when we left that stadium, all the Ohio State fans coming out of their houses as our bus was headed to the airport. And I don't know how they knew it was our team bus, but they would come out of their house with their drinks, you know, kind of toasting our effort. You know, now I know if we would have beat them, they probably would have been throwing those things at us. <laughs> yeah. But they were just giving us the, you know, a, a, just a big kudos basically for just a great performance because they knew we outperformed. And a lot of the Ohio State fans that we ran into at the airport, they said, you just outplayed our boys. And we knew we did, but it still was an L. And, um, and I was thinking about that, even about this game that we just competed with Utah. You know, and us fans, we kind of get spoiled a lot of times because you know, looks mean a lot to us, you know, and if I offered you a brand new crispy $1 bill mm. compared to a crusty old $50 bill, 
<laughs> You'll take that crusty old fifty a dollar bill anytime before you take that brand new shiny, you know, nice one dollar bill, right? Or yeah, or whatever, because the value of a dub, you just is always going to be more valuable than any loss. And mm. so, as great as that Ohio State memory is for me, it's still the value of it is just like, oh, it would have been so much better, you know. And so, San Diego State coaching staff, players with this last victory against Utah. It's always good to beat Utah, no matter how it happens. It's been a while since we've done it. But the fact is to beat a quality program like that, I don't care how how scary things get, how maybe you didn't execute. The bottom line is when that clock finally says zero and you're the team that has the higher score, you know, you just beat a quality program. You found a way to beat a quality program. And for this week, as I was watching film on our last game against Utah, the thing that stood out with me is defense and special teams did their part to make sure that they gave San Diego State football every opportunity to get this win. The O-line and that running game, I mean, Greg Bell had over 100 yards rushing. He definitely looks like a dude that a lot of teams that play on Sunday are going to be looking at because yeah. the way he attacks, though, he – he really understands exactly stretch really well where he makes that one cut and goes or he sticks with that primary read on that block on the edge and he knows when to get upfield and uh, when to do the cutback. He's really something special and he's explosive. He really is explosive. And it's hard to be a zone scheme running back and be explosive because there has to be a little bit of patience that mm, goes yeah. with the zone scheme, right? You got to let the field play itself out. You got to see how the hole's going to develop because – it's never going to be the same hole. It depends on how the flow of the, of the defense goes and how the blocking, we used to call it blocking a guy on the cylinder that he's on. You just take him against his own momentum, and then the running back adjusts from there. Um, it's, it's different from a gap scheme, which is what San Diego State's been known for for years, running that power, you know, pulling guard, a pulling tackle, or a pulling guard and a pulling tight end and all that, and everybody but blocked gap down, right, and over to the second level. That's a different type of – scheme there that is a downhill scheme tack that a gap and uh and it takes a different type of lineman to do that now usually your big heavies kind of heavy footed big ankle dudes they're your linebacker they're your linemen they're going to be your gap scheme guys they don't move good in 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 open space you don't want to put them in there against a linebacker in space you want to kind of use a double team where they pull off and get you know take advantage of all the big bodies and they just form a wall where zone is a little bit different. You got to be a little bit more athletic. Got to be able to, you know, get up to that second level. And sometimes it's going to be you one on one and a little bit more space to get to that linebacker and all that. So sometimes trying to marry those two schemes together. Sometimes you're going to have a, a big game. Sometimes you're going to have a no game. Sometimes you're going to have a you know tackle for loss type deal. But it's a matter of just staying committed to it. And a lot depends on the O line coach and how well can he coach both especially if his own lineman is a certain body type that he's probably more catered to be a gap scheme kind of guy. And you're trying to get him to be a little bit more like that dancing bear, that big boy that can move his feet. And then if it's a smaller lineman who is very athletic, that can move. How do you get him to the point where he can handle a bigger DT and, and, you know, basically set up that wall, hold the gap open for that tailback and all that. So that's why you don't see a lot of teams that will try to run both schemes. And that means how you recruit as well, you know? So I think the offensive job that they did with the running game was good. Um, you know, I'm sure they want to be a little bit more balanced with, you know, moving chains with the passing game more frequently than what they are right now. But again, um, they're doing enough right now to win, you know? And, uh, and when you beat a quality team like Utah, then you always get, you know, hat tip towards you. And uh, that's a great win by them. Coaches did a great job. The players did a great job. And Lucas Johnson did a great job of just playing that game, you know, and using his athleticism, you know, with that big run that he had and all, you know, and some key passes that he got. In regards to Greg Bell, yeah, I, I was honored to have the opportunity to interview on a Utah radio station this past week. Uh, 1280 The Zone, and that was one of the things I made sure to mention about Greg Bell. That was what they wanted to know. How's the running game for the Aztecs? And Greg Bell, man, he, he finds a way to get through those holes, 
follow his blockers. He's patient, like you're saying, but also has that burst to just get through past the line and always getting positive yardage. So it was awesome to see him have a, a really, really tough 116 or so yards, two touchdowns. Like he just really made it happen in the opportunities that he got.